Welcome to BioWorld. Today, I'll be talking about the lymphatic system. We've discussed the lymphatic system previously in Chapter 8 of Semester 2 and Chapter 2 of Semester 1. Earlier in Chapter 8, we discussed how the lymphatic system supports the blood circulatory system in the role of transport. Whereas previously in semester one, when learning about the connective tissues, you were introduced to some of the white blood cells that are related to the lymphatic system. So you can review these videos to help refresh. In today's lesson, I'll be talking about the role of the lymphatic system in immunity. Now, if you can recollect, the lymphatic system is made up of a number of different organs. So, when we are infected, each one of these organs plays an important role in keeping the pathogen away from infecting us. So, let me introduce what are the roles of each organ. The first organ encountered by the pathogen will be the tonsils found in our throat. The pathogens may enter through the food we eat or even through the air we breathe. When the pathogens enter into our mouth, the tonsils will help to filter the antigen and destroy them. However, some of the pathogen may still enter the digestive system. Once the pathogens successfully enter the digestive system, they will enter the stomach where the hydrochloric acid may be able to destroy some of the pathogen. However, a large amount of these pathogens may begin to occupy the intestine. However, our immune system is prepared, whereby the next lymphatic organ is located in the small intestine. This is known as the Peyer's patch. The Peyer's patch can filter the antigens in the small intestine. And over here, we have the organ called the appendix. The appendix will be able to filter antigens that are located in the large intestine. Now, what about pathogens that continue to remain in the digestive system? pathogens will travel on into the blood circulatory system. Some of these pathogens may be forced out into the lymphatic system. Now what the pathogen does not know is that in the lymphatic system there are places called the lymph node where we find these pathogens will be filtered and destroyed. Pathogens that remain in the circulation may also end up traveling into the spleen. Now in the spleen, we find that the pathogens are once again filtered and destroyed. So you can see that most of the time, wherever these pathogens go, the lymphatic organs tend to destroy them. However, some are still able to survive in our blood. The pathogens that continue to circulate in our blood will now be attacked by the immune cells produced by the lymphatic system. These cells originate from either the bone marrow or the thymus gland. The bone marrow synthesizes many types of blood cells, including red blood cells, platelets, as well as this group of white blood cells, which include the granulocytes, that are the basophil, eosinophil, and neutrophil, as well as the agranulocytes, which include the lymphocytes, as well as monocytes. 
Now, these lymphocytes will remain in the bone marrow to develop into mature B lymphocytes, while some of the lymphocytes will travel to the thymus gland to develop into T lymphocytes. So both the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes will destroy these pathogens. Both the T cells as well as the B cells provide us with immunity. Being immune means the B cells and T cells are able to recognize the pathogens or antigens in our body. Once it recognizes these enemies, the B cells then will start to produce antibodies and the T cells will begin to mobilize, that is move towards the pathogens to destroy these pathogens. And this process is done efficiently and quickly. In this way, we do not get an infection. Now, if we want to know more about how the B cells as well as the T cells help to provide us with immunity, you can check out my videos on the cell-mediated immune response as well as the humoral immune response. Till my next video, bye-bye.